Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, it is a day to give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host and speaker, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. Let us go briefly to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you this day for being God and being God all by yourself. We come to you this morning, Lord, just giving you thanks and giving you praise. We ask you, Lord, to continue to watch over us and keep us and we plead the blood of Jesus over everyone on this conference call and everyone that tunes in by Facebook. Uh, Lord, and we just ask you to bless this technology. We plead your blood over it. We plead your blood to Heavenly Father over every life that this message can touch. Touch someone to Heavenly Father that they might be strengthened. Touch someone that they might be encouraged. And then, Lord, we ask you to touch someone that they might be saved. Oh, Lord, thank you. We thank you and we praise you for all these and many other blessings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Our lesson today is coming from Jeremiah, Jeremiah the uh, chapter 1. This is the calling of Jeremiah. So I'm just going to read the scripture before I get to talking because <laughs> uh, uh, there's a word for this for this lesson. Uh, I'm going to read it out of the uh, King James Version first. Uh, Jeremiah chapter one, starting at verse four. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, ah, Lord God, behold, I, I cannot speak for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their face, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then, verse 9, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I, I put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is the reading of Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 10, which is our lesson for today. This lesson, this lesson is dealing with the calling of Jeremiah. The key verse for the lesson is, is, is verse 8, where the Lord says, Be not afraid of their face, for I am with thee. To deliver thee, says the Lord. Hallelujah. The key concept for this lesson is that God can use everyone, no matter how old or how young we are. Now, my keys for kids this morning is God knows who you are. That's number one. Number two, you are special to God. Number three, God has great plans for you. Hallelujah. And then the in-depthness of the lesson, when we try to get a little deep in the lesson, we're going to deal with the learning facts to 
describe the Lord's intent for Jeremiah's prophetic ministry. The biblical principles is to explain how the gospel accomplishes the ob ob objectives given to the prophet Jeremiah. And then our daily application, what we should take home with this is to respond to the call from God despite personal feelings of inadequacy. Oh, hallelujah. And so this lesson, this lesson, this lesson, I've always found it to be a very profound word because uh, uh, I can relate to Jeremiah in many ways of, of, of his calling, being called when he was young and being afraid. And so I, I appreciate, I appreciate that, that, that lesson in, uh, uh, that we're going to be talking about. But then there are other things of Jeremiah. His name means to, Je to Jehovah throws or Jehovah establishes or Jehovah plants. That's, that's what, what, what Jeremiah's name means. So, so he, he was one of those prophets he that that God used in a mighty and special way and and we we know that uh uh, uh Jeremiah said those famous words uh, in Jeremiah 29 11 I know the plans that I have for you plans to 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 do you no harm or do you no evil to prosper you to 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 give you a hope and an expected end and that's that's my paraphrase of it we we know those scriptures and then we know of Jeremiah uh, talking about the potter's house and and how we've been molded and shaped and all of that kind of thing and and this is a wonderful thing wonderful thing about Jeremiah now the other side of, of Jeremiah is that he was a weeping prophet. He was a prophet that told the truth like a TIS and it and it hurt him and made him cry and, and it made him moan for the people and, and he was tried and he was fought against even to the point where they put him inside of a pit. But but he still preached God's word. So so here it is, here it is, this lesson, this lesson that we're gonna look at is during a time where where Judah and and the capital of Jerusalem they they're continuing in their sin they're all caught up in their idolatry and and their rebellion against God and their 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 mistreatment of their neighbors they 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 were following all of these idol gods and doing uh 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 children's sacrifices and all that kind of mess and and God needed someone to speak to him that 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 he 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 could assure that they were going to speak a, a prophetic word to him and, and the hopes that they would repent and then if they did not repent they they were going to face the consequences and we know that the final consequences of 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 the people of of Jerusalem at that time and 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 the people uh in 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 uh uh uh, uh Judah was that they were taken captive cap taken captives by the Babylonians so so that was their final conclusion but he, and some would say well he preached and they didn't repent well hey was was their repentance his problem? No, he had to speak God's word. He had to tell what God told him to tell. So let's look at his calling. And and some say, well, well how old was Jeremiah when he was called? Well, um, uh, some have said he was in his twenties, uh, which would you know, as a priest, that would make him young. And some say he was a child. Uh, either way, it doesn't make a difference whether he was called when he was, you know, 12, 13 years old or, or whether this prophetic call was when he was in his 20s. In any case, when we look at this, he going he gonna to say he felt like he was young, but God already had a word for him for that. So our outline is in two parts. Our outline is in two parts, just two simple points um, uh, for this outline, God's plans. And God's provisions. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I can't make it any simpler than that. God had a plan 
for Jeremiah and God had provisions for Jeremiah. And, and that's, and that is what God does for, for all of his prophets and all of his preachers and all of his teachers. God has a plan for our lives and God has provisions for our lives. Oh, hallelujah. And we have to recognize that God has a plan and a provision for us. And that's what we're going to see in this calling of Jeremiah. So verses one through five, I mean, verses four through five, excuse me, says, uh, 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 and I'm going to read now out of um, the New Living Translation. The Lord gave me this message. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Oh, hallelujah. Before he was even born, before he even came out of his mother's womb, while he was in the belly, God had already had a plan for his life. He was born to do what God had called him to do. He was born for this. And we have to realize that there are certain things in our lives that we are born to do. God has a plan for our lives. He has designed us. He has created us. Oh, we're, 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 we're uh, beautifully and wonderfully made by God. And he has a task for us to do. And that was Jeremiah, he set him apart. He sanctified him, which means he made him holy. And, 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 he, and, he, and then he appointed him as a prophet. He, he gave him this ordination while he was still in his mother's womb. Oh, somebody ought to say hallelujah. Some people may say you ain't nothing. Some people may say you ain't worth anything. Asking you, as my sister said on Friday night, who you think you are? Oh, I tell you who I am. I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of God. He He ordained me for this. He called me into this. Even before I was in my uh, out of my mother's womb, I've been sanctified to speak, to preach, and teach his word. That's who I am in God. Not no, no, you don't understand. In God, that's who I am. In Christ Jesus, that's who I am. Oh, hallelujah. We have to realize that God has a plan for our lives. I don't, I don't care what family you're born into. I don't care what circumstances or situations you're born into. God had a plan when he created you. And he has a purpose for your life. A plan and a purpose for your life. I knew you. That's what God said to Jeremiah. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. You're going to speak my word unto the nations. You're going to speak my word to the people. And Jeremiah as you read through the whole book, he did just that. He spoke God's word, not only to the people of Judah, but to the people in the surrounding areas. He spoke God's word. And that's what God had planned for his life. And so God made a plan for his life. And now we go to our second point. God made provision. And this is verses six through ten, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take them each one at a time. Oh sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for for you. I'm too young. That's 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 what 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 Jeremiah replied to God when he told him that he was appointed and anointed to preach his word. He says, I I, um, I cannot speak. For I am a child. Oftentimes, when we hear the calling, when we receive an assignment from God, we start telling God why we couldn't do it or why we can't do it. 
how inadequate we are, how, how we're not able to do a certain thing, how we got different problems, we can't talk right, or, or we got illnesses and we can't do this, that, and the other. But God calls us. And if he calls us to do something, he's going to equip us to do it. We have to get our focus off of our own ability and put our focus on God. He's the one that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that is working in us in Christ Jesus. It is he that is able to do it. And we have to trust him and obey him and, and just, 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 just lay ourselves on him instead of focusing in on our weaknesses and focusing in on our problems. Change your focus. Change your focus off of yourself and put your eyes on Jesus. Change your focus off of your shortcomings and inadequacy and put your focus in on the power of God. That, that's, that's what Jeremiah had to do. That's what God was telling you. This is what you, you got to put your focus in the right place. Oh, hallelujah. And that's what we have to do. We have to put our focus in the right place. And so in verse 7, God replied to him, don't say I am too young. For you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. God came back and replied to him and told him, man, look, you're you going to do what I say. You got to do what I say. Don't say you young. Don't, don't, don't say you just inadequate. Stop speaking those words. Speak positive words over yourself. Encourage yourself. Speak positive words. Don't speak about your inadequacy or your shortcomings, but speak about how God is able, how God is faithful. And if God called you and if God assigned you, appointed you and ordained you, he will give you the power. He will give you the strength. He will give you the wisdom and the knowledge to perform the task that he has willed for your life. For it is God that worketh in us, both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. Oh, hallelujah. And so he said, don't, 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 don't say you're too young. For you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And then God says to him, and don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you, and I, the Lord, have spoken. God was reading Jeremiah's mail. Jeremiah wasn't only afraid the fact that he was too young and, and that he, 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 he couldn't speak right, but he was also afraid of the people and what the people were going to say back to him and what the people were going to do to him. That's what he was afraid of. And God read his knee mail before his, he even let that thought come out of his mouth. God read his mind and, and understood his cry. And he said, look, don't be afraid of the people. They, they don't be afraid of their faces. Don't, 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 don't look at them and get scared every time you try to speak to them. Don't do it. He says, because I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to be with you. I will protect you. Oh, hallelujah. I mean, let's put this in practical 
practical everyday situations. You have a presentation at work. You're at a job interview and you're afraid to go into the interview or you're afraid to do the presentation. You need to understand, don't be as scared of their faces. You, 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 you got to trust God that he's there with you and he's protecting you and he will do whatever he needs to do to help you get to where he wants you to get to. If he opened up the door for the interview, he will empower you. If he gave you the, the assignment, allowed you to have the assignment to, to do a presentation, he'll give you the power to get through that presentation. Don't be afraid of their faces. Don't be scared of them. God is with you. He's going to protect you. He's going to keep you. He's going to deliver you. And he says, the Lord I, the Lord, have spoken this. That's an emphatic word from God, an exclamation point word. And, and I mean, and, and if you don't understand, when, when there's an exclamation point word from God, it goes all the way back to the beginning. When God speak a thing, it must be, he said, let there be light and there was light. Let there be, 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 uh, sky, moon, stars, let and up, boom, there is. Let there be animals, doom, there is. Let there be, whenever God speak a thing, it comes to pass. And so he's telling Jeremiah, don't be afraid. For I'll be with you. I, the Lord, have spoken this. And then the next part of his provisions, not only in his provisions will God presence and power be with them. God had to do a work on Jeremiah. Oh, that's the wonderful part. God don't leave us by ourselves. God don't leave us to our own accord. He does a work in us. And verse nine says, then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, look, I'll put my words in your mouth. Oh, hallelujah. God touched his mouth. God put words in his mouth. Now, you remember on last week, we was looking at Isaiah's calling. And in Isaiah's calling, the, the sheriffs went to the th uh, throne and got a coal out the altar and put it on Jeremiah. I mean, put it on Isaiah's lip because Isaiah said, I was a man of unclean lips and undone in the midst of unclean people. So the coals cleaned his mouth out and, 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 and God's, God's anointing was upon him. Well, this time in Jeremiah, God touches Jeremiah's mouth himself. And, 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 and that touch was to empower him. That touch was to anoint him. That touch was to cleanse him. That touch was to give him everything he needs. God touched his mouth. God touched his lips. God touched his tongue that he would be able to speak the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. It is wonderful to get an education in God's word, to study the word of God, to rightly divide the word of God. That, that's important and that's vital. But even the devil knows God's word. You need a touch from the Lord to really speak God's word. You need a touch from the Lord that when you speak, you're speaking words that are anointed and appointed for a given time, season, and situation in someone's life. Your words as a prophet, as a preacher, as a teacher, as a father, as a mother, as a son, as a daughter, as, as an uncle or aunt, as a worker, a co-worker, a friend, your words, when they're spoken and they're seasoned with the touch of God's hands, can bless somebody to help them, to encourage them, to help them get and go just a little while longer. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed are those who speak God's word. Blessed are those who 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 just who 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 have the anointing to, to say a word of encouragement, to pray for somebody. And Jeremiah, 
God gave him the provisions to be that kind of speaker. And then our last verse, verse 10. He says, today, I've appointed you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. Oh, hallelujah. Jeremiah had a great assignment. He had to speak words, the words of God. And he spoke the words of God. And to some, when he spoke those words, it was tearing them down. It was tearing them up because they, they were sinning. And they were uh, uh, idolaters following after other gods. And when Jeremiah spoke those words, it cut them to the heart. It cut them and it just tore, tore them down. And they felt like they were being destroyed. But in every word that he spoke, he always had an other side that all you have to do is repent and turn towards God. Repent and give your life back to God. And, 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 and you won't face the destruction. You won't face the consequences of your sins. Just repent and God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Just repent and confess your sins. And then if you do that, you'll be built up and you'll be planted. But no, there are some that will never, ever repent and so they'll face the consequences. But thanks be to God, there are many that will repent and turn from their wicked ways. And they will receive the blessings of God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. This, this lesson from, from Jeremiah's call is such a great lesson. And, 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 I didn't have to go long this morning. Y'all said, wow, you you no, you didn't complete the lesson already. Yeah, it's it's that kind of lesson. We 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 gotta be confident in God. We we gotta be free from our fears and our doubts and understand that we shouldn't be afraid. What God has assigned us to do, He'll give us the power to do it. Hallelujah. Thoughts to ponder as we get ready to close this lesson. Before we were even born, God created us and has a plan and purpose for us. Number two, don't doubt. Don't doubt God. God's plan for your life. Don't doubt. Don't doubt that he's called you to do something special and be special to him. God wanted Jeremiah to know that he was going to be, what wasn't going to ever be on his own. He wasn't ever going to be by himself. God was always going to be there to guide him and direct him. Even when being a prophet was really hard. Because I know Jeremiah had a time that he said, Man, God, I don't even want to preach your word no more. I'm so tired. I'm so frustrated. But Jeremiah came back and said, but it's like fire. Oh, hallelujah. It's like fire shut up in my bones. Oh, hallelujah. And so God will always be with you too. You are special to God and he loves you. Thank you for listening to this lesson tonight this morning excuse me let us pray dear father god help us to remember you have a plan for our lives even before we was born you had a plan for our lives your plan is to prosper us to give us no evil but to help us and not to harm us and to give us an expected end, 
a prosperous future in you, O oh God. We thank you and we praise you. Help us, Lord. Remove our doubt. Help us to have faith in you. Help us, Lord, when we sin to repent and call upon your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Before I close the recording, I like to always pray the prayer of salvation just so that someone that might be on the line or listening to this recording later, they might give their life to Christ. So this is the prayer of salvation and you can repeat this prayer after me. It is based on Romans 10, 9 and 10. But like chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, and verses 13. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. Please forgive me, God. Please forgive me of my sins. I repent. And I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life and to rule and reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer and truly believe it in your heart, you are now saved. May God bless you and keep you. For those on Facebook, we're going to go into our overtime session and on the conference call, and we'll have a discussion and interchange if you want to join us. The number is 910-218-0531. Again, 910-218-0531. Be blessed, Facebook, and may God keep you.